Hello. Uh, this is a footrest to a wheelchair. It is at its uh, limit uh, for lifting up. It can't adjust it anymore and I need to get this about another three inches higher. One member of our family is disabled and uh, when she comes to stay with us uh, we have a, a wheelchair uh, to help her get around the house. If any of you know anything about disabled equipment, um, buying anything that's specially adapted for a person is horrendously expensive. I try to modify standard equipment um, because it's uh, less expensive and uh, adapt it for her needs. And I do that by observation. I look at what she's having trouble with and then I think, oh, I could make something to improve that uh, situation. Now, enough of all that. You've got the background to it now. Um, now, I didn't think I was going to be able to do this because I thought there might be some form of a captive nut in the tube and uh, that I wouldn't be able to en engineer my way around it. I'll come off of the camera now and uh, show you all the bits on the table here. I think it's quite an interesting solution to a problem and one that um, I've not come across, or if I have, I forgot about it. Um, so let me show you what it is. You obviously loosen the nut up on the, on the base and then you can actually pull the assembly apart. And this is just a tube. Uh, that it fits into. This little plastic thing here slides against the fit and tightens up in the tightens up in the bore of the tube. Like so. Very clever. Roughly in alignment. That will slide in easy. Then as you tighten it up it becomes more offset and obviously tightens up in the bore of the uh, tube of the, uh, of the uh, supporting leg. Now, this plastic bit is quite interesting in the how's it made. It's got a metal section in there, which is simply a nut um, that's uh, moulded into, obviously moulded into this this piece of plastic. Now, I think I could um, duplicate that uh, using sort of a 3D printer and a and a nut. Now, the thread on here happens to be M8. Uh, it's a coarse thread, 1.25mm. It's a brilliant idea and I can see some other uses for this in things that I do. Now, we do have a problem. It may seem a bit aggressive to you, but I'm going to remove three inches off of this tube um, keeping that angle. So I need to cut an angle somewhere up here. Um, now the bolt itself is uh, quite long and I went to purchase some other bolts, uh, a shorter bolts, uh, those are you know, so that it would fit because this would just be um, run out of uh, thread on here to start with and um, would be too long in the tube in this tube because because to achieve the aim I need to cut three inches off of this which would leave uh, which would leave uh, probably leave this and Hanging up against the bend in the tube inside. These, just two of these, buying two of these was uh, would was going to be quite expensive. Um, I did think about buying just a straight length of studding, putting a nut on there, and uh, solving the situation that way, which would have been cheaper in fact. Um, however, 
I decided to buy myself a, um, a die, uh, to, a threaded die to uh, cut a new thread on these bolts. Now, this was more expensive by about a fiver over buying two of these. And uh, I, I concluded that uh, it's a nice tool to have in my toolkit. That's how I'm going to tackle the problem. I'm left with this at the end of the day, which I can use on other things. Stupid money for a couple of bolts. Now, without more chat, I'm just going to get on and do it. Um, I'll be back again soon. Well, the angle is about 45 degrees. You can use any way you like to cut it. Um, Oops, and the blade broke, which is not unusual for using a uh, piercing saw. Obviously I could use a hacksaw, but um, things are going to get in the way and it's going to get tight in here in a minute. I'll go and change the blade on the piercing saw. It really is annoying that you can't find just blades, and I've got dozens of them. I've got to find a comfortable position to saw with this horrible thing. Of course, I could use a cut off disc and a grinder. But the tool I've most precision with is the piercing saw. I expect I'm going to have to do a lot of filing to get the angles precise. Well, I think other than with a lick of the file to uh, clear the burrs up, that's not bad. Could have been a lot worse. Right. <laughs> Cleaning up the surface with a smooth file so that things slide a lot better. That's nice. Now we've got to shorten the leg. And if I get this as accurate as the other one, I'll be well pleased. I don't think I will. Nah, won't be. I don't know. We'll check it with a check it with a square or something and see what's what. Right. I'm going to cut this uh, rod somewhere around about between those two marks. Um, but first of all, I'm going to run a die down and cut a new thread beyond them two marks so that I've got somewhere to uh, start the die off again when I need, and work out how much thread I need on this last section. I'm going to do it off camera because uh, I haven't got anywhere in the shed um, to uh, put the tripod up. It's uh, cluttered up a bit and I need to uh, put this, anchor this down in the vise uh, to get the uh, 
pressures on to cut the thread. Um, so I'll have to do it off camera. We've come to a grinding halt because this stem is narrower than the diameter of the thread. So where it stops it necks down and you can see that the thread that I'm cutting um, has no crest on it. And that's rather represent a problem and um, I'm going to have to think of a solution. I have always incorrectly assumed that with part threaded bolts that I'd have the option of extending the thread if needed be. Um, I've never had to because I've always bought the right size bolt for the job I'm doing. Um, in this instance I thought I could save a few coppers and um, proved uh, a costly mistake. The, and this is the reason why you can't do that. The reason behind it is that when these uh, part threaded bolts are made um, they roll the threads in under pressure and that means this material here, the shaft, um, ends up with uh, grooves pressed into it which form the trough or the valley of the thread and the material that is displaced goes to form the crest of the uh, thread and such that the crest will be wider than this shaft. Um, you don't have any waste material like you would have if you was cutting the thread like with a swarf, or a metal swarf or anything like that. Now I should have known this, I did know it. Um, it was a silly mistake on my part for making some false assumptions and I cannot stress to you before you get into doing these things, take more measurements. Uh. Now, uh, don't you go making the same mistakes I made. Um, buy the correct bolt in the first place, it'll save you a lot of aggravation and um, time is money. Uh, that's all I've got to say on the subject. Um, I think we'll end the video here. Um, I won't be able to give you an update on the wheelchair until such times as uh, the lady arrives again uh, for a short stay with us and we can try out and see whether all the modifications have worked then. Um, if you got this far, I hope you found something useful.